Let's pretend our glyphs are perfect rectangular shapes. What tracking does it ensures that the spacing between the glyphs is evenly matched. But since the glyphs are far more complex shapes, the negative space needs to be adjusted. And that's where kerning comes into place. So in this tutorial we're going to be talking about AutoCurn, and to do that, let's jump into FontForge. AutoCurn is a very powerful tool, but it has a few flaws, so I'm going to be showing you my preferred method of using it. First of all, select all the glyphs, go to the metrics tab, select auto width, and set the separation value to zero. Then go to element, font info, lookups, gpos, add lookup, then from the drop down menu select pair positioning, kerning. Click on the arrow down, select Kern, Horizontal Kerning, click OK, then add subtable. Make sure you have used individual kerning pair selected, and since we're not going to be using classes, we're going to skip this part for now. Then you have default separation value, and what this does is when you auto kern new entries, the negative space within the glyphs is going to try to match this value. Then you have minimum kern, everything below this value is just going to be ignored. So what we want to do for now is just get rid of all the negative space between the letters. And to do that, just set the separation value to 0 and minimum kern to 0. And then make sure you check the boxes for touching, only kern glyphs closer and auto kern new entries. Then below you have two different tables, that's because the kerning needs to be done between pairs. So. For example, if you want to kern A, J, you would do it this way. But if you want to kern J, A, you would do it the other way around. So as an example, I'm going to be kerning the letters. And to do that, just click and drag over the letters, holding down the shift key. And click OK. Now AutoCurn has finished processing all your pairs, and since some of them are not correct, as you can tell, it still helps you see what pairs need to be kerned. So once again what you want to do is get rid of all the negative space between the letters, and to do that you can either type in a value like so, or you can just click and drag. And to make things easier you can even increase the size of the text. You also want to make sure that the glyphs don't go into each other. Like here for example. And basically what you want to do is go through each and every one of them and make sure everything is correct. This is going to be a long and tedious process, but in the next tutorial I'm going to be showing you an easier way to do this. So I'm going to be skipping this part for now, but after you've finished, what you want to do is click OK on your way out, otherwise you're going to lose all your changes. Set the track into whichever value you want. In my case, I'm going to use 50. What you have achieved by doing this is that all the space in between the letters now is going to be equal. And of course this is not what kerning is all about, but it is going to help you a lot in the next steps. If you have any questions or you want to meet people that work in similar projects as you, make sure you join my Discord server. The link is in the description box below.